I mean, does that mean we're live? He said, don't go until you see yourself, and here we are. All right, man, all right. Well, I promised all of you guys that we were going to do... Uh, oh, like, multiple we, camera angles, chopping up food. Yeah, I know, but I uh, had the flu all weekend. So, uh, yeah, no, stay away from me. <laughs> uh, in fact, today I'm a little groggy, so if I totally lose it on camera, yeah, you'll know why. <laughs> That's okay. All right. You'll, you'll sound good on sound. Hey, mm. speaking of which, I have an announcement. Oh, yeah. What's that? We just got approved today. Uh, both, we submitted a podcast, Ask BRS oh. TV Live, uh, over the weekend. And this morning we got two emails one from Google Play, one from iTunes, that the hashtag Ask BRS TV Live podcasts are up. So I'll post a link. Uh, if you guys want to find it, you can search. Don't search <laughs> Ask BRS TV Live. Search for Bulk Reef Supply. And it should pop up with our feed. I just found it in iTunes this morning. So I'll post links all over the place. But yeah. Well, I, I didn't know. There's only one episode up right now. But, uh, I'd high five you, but I don't want to give you the flu. I don't want to touch you. All right. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> all right. So yeah, check out the podcast. So today what we're going to do is uh, answer a whole bunch of questions about all that feeding stuff that we did. And I promise we're going to get back to the... Uh, how to make your do-it-yourself fish food because I, uh, I want to do it myself. And we already committed to doing it for these tanks, and we're going to share with you guys how to do it effectively for well, sure. When you bought all the dry ingredients too, so we're prepped, oh, yeah. we're prepped to make some dry, yeah, some I, DIY. I almost went to uh, the Asian store today, uh, but it's like uh, super duper cold today, and it barely <laughs> made it to work as it is. So like I just couldn't do it. All right. All right, but uh, before we get too far into all this, uh, just give stuff away, man. So uh, those of you who don't know, I mean, I don't know how you don't know anymore, but uh, if you're a preferred reefer, click the link in the bottom, and then we give away stuff every week. Mm -hmm. uh, it, could, it could be stuff you bought, could be just stuff in your cart. We got one of each, or all two right. of each. Yeah. Today. Oh, two of each. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we get four of them. Wow. All right, so uh, we got uh, Hilfer John uh, Dumlau uh, from Oak Park, uh, California. We got a uh, bulkhead, thread by thread, one of them, a CPEX ball valve, a Schedule uh, 80 Union, and a Schedule 80 nipple. Nice. All right, 64 bucks, going back to your account. Bravo, man. Uh, and uh, David Manos from Conway, uh, Arkansas. Got a uh, black Schedule 40 uh, pipe, black egg crate, 2x2 two two square, and uh, black Schedule 40 up. Oh, uh, 40 inch inch pipe or two inches and one inch. All right. Oh, cool. So 78 bucks, man. But he's making frag racks. Frag racks for the like. black. Yeah, I bet you. Yeah, that that feels, feels right. That does feel right. All right. <laughs> uh, awesome. And I always have a hard time. Okay. Tanya uh, from uh, Bird Strand from uh, Vidor, Texas. Got. So this is a shopping cart. Oh, this cart. is a cart, by the yeah. way. She didn't actually buy this thing, man. She, she can uh, now. She can now for sure. Yeah, this is just in your cart. Is uh, $22.65 for some uh, Fosban phosphate uh, absorption media from nice. Two Little Fishes. I mean, I don't know why that isn't BRS, but, you know, so be it. Uh, you got 22 bucks. Oh, man. Uh, oh, you know what's so sad? 22 Is in the 65. wish list was a... Two hundred and seventy-four dollar. Uh, uh, oh my man! We don't do wish lists. Got to be in the I shopping know. cart. We should think about wish lists though. Uh, Those are wish lists are permanent too. I still have stuff in my personal account, bulk reef supply on my wish list. Mm. I don't know what it is, so I know there's stuff in there. Well, maybe we should change it up, man. You never know. <laughs> All right. So uh, inside of this one too is uh, Matthew uh, Soros from Chicatawaga at New York. It got a Salifert magnesium uh, test kit for 19.61, and a two-part pharma calcium uh, starter package nice. for a total of sixty-one dollars. These are all tiny. It's a shopping guys. cart. A shopping cart again. These are all tiny, tiny orders, though, man. Oh well. Yes. All right. All right. Well, uh, four of them, though. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Let's cool. get to the meat of it. So we're talking today about uh, core nutrition, uh, which includes all kinds of different things from just feeding your fish uh, and their related poo, mm -hmm. uh, to amino acids, to particulate foods, to uh, light, uh, all kinds of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that I just wanted to point out, and you know, I, I think this was really uh, helpful from uh, Dana Riddle was, you know, poke, point out the difference between feeding your corals, which is an animal, 
right. and feeding the symbiotic algae that lives within the coral, hmm. which is more of a plant than really anything, uh, and feeding the zooxanthellae. So, you know, first frame of mind is really, you know, how do we go about feeding the zooxanthellae, which is going to provide, you know, 70% plus of the nutrition to the coral. Hmm. And then after that, how do we find those additional things that the coral is going to need to be able to provide uh, energy to produce protein, uh, fats, and carbohydrates within its tissue. So, you know, uh, the big thing about that, and was with the uh, the zooxanthellae, was finding a source of uh, nit nitrogen and phosphorus. Yeah. And for me, this is like a really interesting one because, you know, we debate all the time, like the ocean has like nearly no nitrogen and phosphorus in it. Like, yeah. You know, hundreds to thousands of times less than the aquarium, right? Uh -huh. But it doesn't have any, or it has tons and tons of prey. So there's all kinds of bacterial prey. There's all kinds of zo uh, uh, zooplank zooplankton. So they can capture that and break it down into the nitrogen and phosphorus they need, rather than just readily available nitrogen and phosphorus. Exactly, yeah. man. So like all it really needs is inside the coral's tissue is uh, lives the zooxanthellae, and the zooxanthellae needs some force, a uh, form of nitrogen and phosphorus, mm. and it's going to get it from one of two ways. Either it's going to absorb it through its tissue, mm -hmm. you know, uh, directly, and there's actual like pathways specific to that that will only let one of those two things through and try to prevent others. And it will absorb it directly through its tissue, or the coral will capture a piece of prey. It could be a suspended particle, bacteria, it could be uh, uh, the zooplankton, it could be a lot of different things. It will digest it and then release the excess phosphorus and nitrogen into the solutions within its body, at which point it's available to the zooxanthellae as well. So, so, be, so because of an aquarium environment, what do you think is our best approach at providing that for? Well, so in the aquarium, man, like it's probably happening reverse of what's happening in the ocean, yeah. right? So in the ocean, it's probably getting most of that nitrogen and phosphorus from, from prey. Right. From prey, right. and very little of it from the ocean. Huh. In the aquarium, because the nitrogen and phosphorus and phosphate and nitrate levels are so high, even in like really low areas mm. or low levels, it's probably getting, and it's gotten very little zooplankton or anything oh, yeah. like that in, right. in the tank probably getting most of it through absorbing it through its tissues and why you know you see a lot of success from people dosing nitrate or even phosphate directly to the tank specifically in tanks that have super high nitrogen and phosphorus uptake yeah so you know I, I just think it was interesting to see how like some of the stuff is in, in inverse of each other in the aquarium than it is in the ocean and it probably is never going to change that and you know also kind of like makes you think a lot about some of those things like uh, the ultra low nutrient systems like zeovid and whatnot right. right yeah and so you look at that and you're like well hey man this thing is uh, ultra low nutrient but you know you're telling me zero nitrate and phosphate's a bad idea and i'm actually not telling you that near zero nitrate and phosphate's a, a bad idea I'm saying, telling you near zero nitrogen and phosphorus availability is a yeah. Yeah, bad idea. But if you're feeding your corals uh, amino acids, you're feeding them prey with bacteria, which uh, like the zeovid system does, right. or other systems like it, mm -hmm. you're actually providing you know, a wealth of nitrogen and phosphorus to the, to the coral. It's just in a different format. It's probably closer to what they're not better consumable yeah, format yeah, yeah. Uh, actually you know one of the cool things that that I think one of the, the neater things in the whole video and our discussions with WWC was when Josh said that they actually nurture uh, corals back to health using that Brightwell uh, uh, right here. which one is it called that one uh, the coral amino mm -hmm. product there that they use that to actually take stressed out corals and nurture them back to health and I'm like wow man that's huh. a you know a big claim but like it's not a claim for them they don't sell you know bright no it's just know, what like, they use yeah, yeah i guess they do sell it but uh -huh. you know uh, that isn't the terms of the conversation we're having with them so mm -hmm. you know there are you know nurturing these corals back to health and it makes sense because you know the corals tissue is a uh, you know at risk or it's losing it needs to you know build tissue back the easiest way for it to do that is probably to consume the lowest energy source of protein there is and taking you know amino acids and assembling them into proteins is a lot easier than doing it from uh, other sources of complex nutrients. Oh, yeah. So you know it makes a lot of sense that they would be able to do that. And I'll, I'll say you know 
early on, man, I got with a lot of the comments on Reef Chili, you know, we used to sell this stuff on eBay and whatnot. And I was really surprised at how many people would make the comments of it, like Brock Corals, like back to, like from the dead, you know, like, <laughs> like for real. But, you know, if you think about it, you know, like, hey, man, this is getting nutrition that it would normally get in the wild, you mm. know, through prey capture that yeah. it wasn't getting prior. And it's just an easier source uh, than some of the other things. And so I guess, you know, I don't know why I was surprised. But. So do you... Uh so do we, I guess one of the questions, one of the bigger questions, like, do I have to feed my corals? Like, hmm. I don't know. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to say no. Uh, you know, like, uh, you've seen too many corals, tanks that, that oh, don't. Oh, yeah. Water but, changes in food, feeding your fish. I mean, that usually, or water changes feeding fish and, uh, like, dosing the alkalinity calcium of some sort. Yeah, and so I guess I'd say, you know, like, the WWC tanks, they don't, like, uh, mm -hmm. they add a bunch of this stuff to a fish food, but it's actually predominantly to the fish. Right. And so that was one of the big things, man. Like, like there's a lot of anecdotal stuff out there about like fish poo and feces being, you know, a source of food for the the corals and whatnot. And like, you know, that's a really big thing that they're preaching at WWC when they're feeding the stuff, like, you know, by the hour, and they're like, more food, more poo. You know, like, oh, really, man? Like, and they're just really, really big on it. And I guess, you know, after doing the research and looking at Dana's stuff, it, you know, there's just so much uh, information out there actually on how much you know uh, nutrition still left in the food after that because the fish's digestive tract is so short mm -hmm. and uh, on top of that you know like it's actually in the right particle size too yeah it's broken down to like the one micron ish range which is common for a lot of uh, SPS and whatnot and so like I'm not surprised that their primary source of nutrition for the corals is actually making sure the feet of the fish are super healthy and uh, pooing a lot, yeah. and then heavy out, you know. Yeah, that's what I've always been told. I've always been told, like some of my reefing mentors and stuff growing up. I was, oh, I want to start a frag tank. Well, you know, fill it full of fish. Yeah, that's all you need to do. Fill it full of fish, tons of fish, and fish poo will feed the corals. And I have to say, like going into the going to their garages and looking at their frag tanks, like that's all they did. There was no coral feeding or target feeding or you know aminos or anything put in the tank. Just big, giant, heavy waste producing fish, tangs and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and a bunch of poop. And but the most vibrant color, well growing corals uh, that I've seen. So. Yeah, I agree, man. And so, like we talked about that video, and we're going to get to some questions here in just a second, but I just want to cover the main topics again real quick, is uh, they talk about heavy in, heavy out, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, you get a lot of comments about, like, well, that just seems stupid. Like, why would I put all that in just to spend all that effort taking it out? And, you know, the big thing is that what you're doing is taking – all the heavy in is in the source of not nitrate and phosphate it's added amino acids and carbohydrates and you know components of protein and all kinds of things that are usable by the coral uh, feeding it those things and then getting out would like would normally just go to waste yeah right mostly nitrates and phosphates right yeah or rotting food so like mm -hmm. you know changing out that filter sock all the time and using or the filter pad because almost everything that goes down the overflow, you know, is just going to settle out in the sump somewhere and yeah. just rot, right? Uh -huh. And so, like, uh, getting it out before it has a chance to break down there into excess nitrate and phosphate. Yeah. And so it's feeding it a bunch and getting the waste out before it breaks down into excess uh, nitrate and phosphate, right? Uh, so heavy in, heavy garbage out, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to keep all the garbage in the tank. We just want to provide... Uh, enough nutrition to the corals. That makes sense. All right, I'm trying to think if there's any other big pieces of this that, uh, uh, I don't know. I bet you they'll come up. We'll just shoot for some questions yeah. here. All right. Uh, when using food like reef roids or chili, how long should you leave it soaking before adding it? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. So, you know, one of the things about these foods is, like, you'll notice on the reef chili, it goes all the way down to, like, one micron mm -hmm. uh, foods. It only does that if you let it rehydrate proper. Okay. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, just put it in some water, it, like, isn't going to probably, the, the little particles at one micron are going to clump together and there'll be 100 microns oh, or okay. something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so, you know, letting it, like, uh, soak up and really shaking it vigorously mm -hmm. will, you know, help all those little particles. Uh, probably the same thing. Now, the reef roids is, like, a variety oh, yeah. of zooplankton and stuff, so it's probably not as small as that. Okay. Uh, you know, ingredients, just marine planktons, you know, so it's yeah. not the same thing. I've always done that just 
make a cup of it, like we do here for the 160 and like at home too, is like you dump a big thing of it, you mix it all up and you let it sit. Sometimes uh, sometimes I forget about it because uh, I let it sit for, I know it's got to sit or I want it to sit for long enough, but then come back to it, give it a couple stirs and then spray it in the tank. But yeah. you can definitely see a difference between if you immediately put it in the water and then add it to the tank, the particle sizes, you can visually see a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, one of the things uh, when we talked about you know, tank turnover, you know, people are shooting for 10 times turnover and stuff, mm. you know, at all the WWC tanks, I mean, two, we said, three. you know, two and a half to three, but like yeah. after you equate everything, it's probably closer to like two, <laughs> right? And at two, man, that means that all the stuff is staying in the tank for a long time. So as long as it doesn't float and it's going through all the turbulence in the, in the tank, if you spray it in there, uh, probably gonna have the time to oh, yeah. you know, do it on its own, but uh, definitely put an effort into it, uh, into that stuff, it, or mixing it up is gonna produce some results. Hmm. All right, uh, you wanna pick another one here? Uh, that says, do I need to turn, do I need to turn the carbon reactor off when feeding Reef Energy A and B? So uh, mm -hmm. I guess the question is, is does Reef Energy or does carbon remove things like amino acids and carbohydrates and vitamins and things like that from the water? I would say I, almost certainly. Oh, yeah? I don't know, man. I, I can't imagine it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, Interesting. Yeah. We have to, I think that was on one of our Investigates idea boards, too, is testing the different things that carbon will pull out. Yeah, it is in there, man. It yeah. is. I, you know, I don't know specifically, uh, you know, carbon pulls out such a wide variety of stuff, but I, I'd be shocked if it didn't pull that stuff out. To but, what degree, though? Yeah, so here's the thing, man. It depends on the tank turnover on right. your tank, and it depends on, like, what's the turnover even of the reactor, because it's only pulling a portion of that water that goes through there. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know, how much effort do you want to put into, you know, removing that? People will turn off their skimmers, and so, like, one of the things you could do is just hook it up to like on an apex or something on your feed mode. Right. You know, hit feed mode and it turns off your reactor and turns off your skimmer or whatnot because your skimmer is going to remove this stuff too. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, in reality, man, like if you don't own an apex and stuff, that just isn't really a, you know, super viable thing. You, know, you could put on some kind of timer, mm -hmm. I guess. But, like, in reality, what I think I'd probably do is just make sure that my, you know, you know, the carbon reactor is a, you know, it's not like a one pass system where it only gets one chance at ever removing any, anything. Yeah. You know, at uh, 100 gallons an hour, if you have a 100 gallon tank, man, it's got 24 times a day to like remove this stuff from your water. You know, it's not exact math like that, yeah. but like it's got a many, many multiple paths. So, you know, move it down to like, you know, 25 gallons an hour, you know, and carbon actually performs better mm. at lower com uh, flow rates. And because it gets that multi pass system and just, Send your carbon to work slower, and so when you put the amino acids in, it will last, you know, stay in the tank longer. Yeah. You know? uh, but my suggestion is it probably will be removed. All right. Let's see. Does acropower or fuel increase phosphate? You know, so blatantly, I mean, explicitly, acropower says that it does not increase uh, nitrates and phosphates. Does it? Like, that's really? one thing that I remember about it's on there somewhere. Does not does finish that statement. not promote algae blooms or elevate nutrient levels. Does not affect the protein skimmer. Oh, wow, man, really? That's a bold claim, man. Well, for, oh. for an amino acid to not contain any phosphorus or nitrogen sources. But there's people that that swear by this stuff that live on it, and I've used it. I used it for a long time too. Uh, and it doesn't need to be refrigerated, so if you can put it on a dosing pump, it doesn't need to be shaken. Okay. So this is what I'm, I mean. I mean, some of those claims uh, on some of this stuff is uh, legit, and some of it's more like experience based, right? Okay. Like, so it doesn't, I can't see it. I haven't read this whole thing yet, but. Uh, you know, won't add to excess phosphate or nitrate levels. Can be one of two things. I think if it said it had no source of nitrogen or phosphorus in it, mm -hmm. it would say that directly. Right. Right. Which I think would be almost impossible. Uh, but if it won't add to excess nitrogen and phosphorus levels, mm -hmm. that means that in a normal dosage, it would be like almost undetectable by the average test kit and in real life use won't actually increase these levels. Okay. And so that's one of the things to point out. You know, Acropower is probably one of the more popular of the amino acids out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of people here use it uh, as their choice. And this is uh, what I'd say is it's probably 
I, I mean, I don't actually know all of what is in all of these things, but this one is generally referenced to me as a more dilute uh, form of amino acids, meaning it's less likely to cause issues in your tank. Like less likely when you add it mm -hmm. to start to see an immediate, you know, cyano, you know, bloomer or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, or nutrient issue or, right, or whatnot. Right. Whereas uh, the you know coral aminos from Brightwell, or Red Sea, they're yeah, yeah they're specifically this one is like more concentrated you know version where right. you know drops matter where this is like you know glug glug glug. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so there are differences, and that's one of the things that maybe investigates could get to add to is and even in in uh, uh, Dana Riddle's uh, articles, you know one of them was almost like water. He didn't sadly didn't say what it was, but one of them is almost like water and one's just filled with amino acids so mm. it'd be interesting to see which one's which and then use it more intelligently based on that because you know even though when this one's dilute you get a lot more for your money uh, and in, and it's more forgiving you know yeah. but uh i gotta have a really hard time believing that there's no way that you could dump an infinite amount of this of amino acids into your tank and not see a uh, increase in nitrogen or phosphorus well but, and that's why I would say probably, you know, the directions are probably, it says that this little bottle treats up to 1,250 gallons. Uh, uh, well, based on usage, direction. won't increase it uh, to some degree, maybe. <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little hesitant to believe all that, but uh, we're not. And then whatever f uh, fuel I is, uh, must be like. A okay. Stadium. Using Red Sea uh, Reef Energy or similar products, is there a better time of day to dose? Something like something like the morning, morning so morning. that the lights are on when the corals absorb food, or right when the lights are off. I can say that uh, you know, with when the lights go off at night, and you go look at, then I go look at my tank, and you shine a flashlight in there. It feels like when all the corals are alive, and all of the feeding, you know, the feeding response is pretty great throughout the tank. So for me, that just uh, for me that inherently tells me like go feed the tank at that time if you're going to do like some kind of broadcast coral feed or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, probably all through the night too, but you know, definitely you, there's a difference between night and light on. So corals that have like uh, you know let their polyps out at certain times of the day, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a trained response. So you know in the wild they let it out at night. It, it takes energy for them to expand uh, and try to capture prey. So mm -hmm. they're not going to use this energy for nothing, uh, and too much flow and whatnot can you know damage the polyps. So. They let these things out at night in the wild because that's when, you know, a lot of uh, the zooplankton and prey come out and that's when they're most likely to be able to expend energy to capture energy. Mm -hmm. And so in the tank, though, you'll see it, you know, often they're out all the time because we've trained them that uh, food is available all of the time, yeah. you know. And so uh, it's just a little bit of a different scenario. Uh, is there a better time of day, man? I wish I could remember it, uh, but there was does a does Dana say something about he it? He does, man. There was a really good oh, yeah. reason as to why nighttime was the best. That's mm -hmm. you know, kind of uh, for those who didn't check out since I'll, the beginning. Uh, like I was out all weekend with the flu, <laughs> so I'm trying to put the pieces together here. But uh, somebody linked all the articles in a comment on your video on Friday, so I'll make sure that after we leave here to put all those all those. Dana Riddle, Riddle articles that you talked about. I'll, I'll put them in the description on this after we're done. But yeah, in general, man, I would say that if you're going to set it up on a dosing pump or something, man, uh -huh. dose it at night. Okay. Uh, if you're going to dose it by hand, do it when it's convenient. You know, like that's you're just already real. feeding the tank. Why yeah, not feed the yeah. If you're looking for ideal, do it at night. Mm -hmm. If you're looking for uh, convenience, which I mean, I just say not even just convenience, but realistic, then you know, do it at that time. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Chris uh, asks, anyone had luck with an auto feeder like the Apex or Eheim for reef chili? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, we actually did it here. We did it for a while. Uh, I don't know if it still has reef chili in it, but back here in the corner behind Ryan, we had the yeah. we had an auto feeder set up on there. Feeding ring was the, the crucial part about it because if you it likes to float on the surface. This uh, if you drop any of the dry powder onto the tank, like 90% or more of it's going to go down the overflow. 
but into a feeding ring and slowly dissolve. I think you had it run like three times a day or something like that. We were dumping reef chili in there because we, yeah. we were trying to uh, add excess or uh, add more nitrogen and phosphorus because we just couldn't get a reading out mm -hmm. of the tank no matter how much we put in there. And honestly, man, I wish we would have kept that up because uh, the tank's showing signs of low nitrogen and phosphorus again. And so now that mm -hmm. uh, we got text on it, I think we're going to put that back on yeah. uh, as well as probably add some more fish to the tank uh, and increase the, the feeding schedule as well mm. but yeah the the uh, the only feeder man that i've actually liked uh, over the years has definitely been the apex one or the the uh lifeguard which is like the same same thing, thing yeah. yeah and so it seals really well like if you're trying to do a powdered food like reef chili that would take oh, on yeah. take on you know condensation or like clump up really quickly uh, yeah my big thing is feeding a consistent amount every yeah. day right and so uh you know, I've tried other ones and they just don't feed a consistent amount every day and cause problems. Mm -hmm. And so, and used a wide variety of sizes of food. And so this worked really good with powders. It works with pellets and stuff. I would definitely explore, you know, sizes of pellets that work with my equipment, mm -hmm. you know? And so like, I mean, pellet food is cheap, you know? So I just try a couple different size pellets. It gives me the most consistent results with uh, the feeder, but like, that's the only one that I would use at this point. It's a little loud, you know, happens like, you know, once or twice a day, but yeah. like it is uh, a little loud. And like you said, I definitely get the feeder ring if you're gonna do like powdered foods, cause they float. And so powdered foods needs a while to kind of sit there and do their thing. Uh, otherwise they'll go straight down the overflow. <laughs> so uh, you don't want that. All right. Uh, let's see, there was a question I was looking at. Here. Do corals benefit from Cellcon? I use it in my fish food. Oh. There you go. You have the so, most experience with Celcon. So Celcon is like a fatty acid, right? Uh -huh. So a bunch of fatty acids. And so the, you know, tissue uh, is, uh, coral tissue is made out of like 50% uh, uh, protein. I'm going to butcher this probably, but 50% uh, protein, 30% uh, or 35% fatty or fat and lipids, mm -hmm. and then 15% carbohydrates. And so, uh, yeah, you know, absolutely providing a source of fatty acids that can build uh, the lipids and fats within the coral's tissue is super beneficial. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how you incorporate those is a whole variety of different ways, but like, uh, you know, you got your dry food, you know, your average pellet food here, you know, those things soak things up, you know, so you can absolutely, instead of letting it soak up salt water, you can let it soak up amino like celcon, acids or celcon yeah. uh -huh. or whatnot, and just having it in the water. Uh, it absolutely, the coral absolutely can soak these things up through uh, its tissue. Not, you know, probably some of them to better degrees than others, but like they can absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, things like the celcon, again, you know, the goal isn't more is better. You know, the right amount is the right amount. So, like, those things are highly concentrated, you know, sources of fatty acids. So, yeah. be aware. Uh, right down here, Todd asked a really good question. What are some signs of low or high nitrogen and phosphorus? So, like... <laughs> a test kit. <laughs> <laughs> they exist, yeah. Uh, low or high nitrogen and phosphorus. So, I'd say, uh, what is high? Uh, well, I know. I feel like I know what low looks like. And okay, it's probably cool. like uh, bleached out or bleachy looking corals. Uh, probably some slow growth. Probably a combination of the both. Like I, I think I ran into this issue once before. Like uh, when I first started reefing, it was uh, all like if all I read about was get rid of nitrates, get rid of phosphates, and usually you're getting rid of more than just nitrates and phosphates when you're attacking it with GFO and carbon dosing and just uh, water changes and everything you can throw at the tank to get rid of the stuff and make it absolute zero. Uh, you're also and then feeding way less too, a combination of that. Like I've I've had my tank look like what I call a hospital sterilized looking tank. So, I mean, there's a, a look to the tank that looks like sterile. I will say that if you've been around for a while, you'll start to notice it. Yeah. yeah it's a tank with pale looking corals, you know, uh, random mortalities. Uh, you know, they're not super frequent, slow growth. Mm. Like the tissue looks really thin and like lack of color. Mm. Uh, those are signs of, you know, not low nitrate or phosphate, low nitrogen or phosphorus right you know could be in the form of low nitrate and phosphate mm -hmm. but if you're not addressing if you got really low, low nitrate and phosphate and you're not addressing in other manners mm -hmm. uh, then that's what it is you know so uh, that's what it looked like 
high nitrate and phosphate in a new tank thing is filled with algae yeah. uh it's grown all over the place and the uh, tank looks like crap uh that's <laughs> that's your sign of high in a you know established tank where there's you know coverage of coralline algae everywhere mm -hmm. and you know things are you know largely looking really good and there's tons of microfauna and whatnot high is really hard to you know identify and you know you don't really know at mm -hmm. which point nitrate and phosphate are you know slowing growth you know phosphate will inhibit calcification mm -hmm. uh you don't really know you know where nitrate you know, transitions into something and it hurts you know you know the metabolic health of the coral and yeah we're only guessing you know nobody really knows at this point but hmm. I, i'd say you know in a newer tank for you know, sure it looks like crap is, <laughs> is, is your sign of high uh but test kit man uh i'll just say that like almost nobody tests you know, a lot of people test for phosphate for some reason and nobody tests for nitrate yeah uh Test for a nitrate, man, like once a month. Mm -hmm. You don't have to test for it all the time. It's not like something you're gonna like play mad scientists on and try to you know test on a daily basis. But yeah. like know what it is on a monthly basis is a really good idea. Nios one is uh, my favorite for that general purpose. And then uh, Triton is coming out with their like uh, oh. organic test kits too, right? So does that test? I don't. I haven't really looked in I super heavy what it does. Oh. So I know they're gonna they're gonna test like the total organics right, in the tank, right. which is like some totally outside of anything you've been able to test for before but hmm. do you think they're going to give you nitrogen nitrogen and phosphorus and they're already giving us phosphate in the other one right but i don't know i you know i don't know yet i don't know we don't have them in here yet do we mm -mm. Not that yeah, i don't know i guess we'll see i'll do one the moment it gets in my hands <laughs> all right uh you know, this is a good question, man, that I have no answer to, but I'm going to hit it anyway. Okay. I use v Zeovit LPS amino acid, but they also have Zeovit SPS version. What's the difference between uh, these two? I have absolutely no clue. Uh, you know, there's like 18 different versions of the Zeovit stuff. And mm. to be honest, they're super tight-lipped about, what's you know, in what's in yeah. all of this stuff. And they won't tell you anything. They smell roughly the same. I know that. Well, well I haven't sniffed them. <laughs> but, like, uh, yeah, I... I don't really know the answer to that question. And I'll say, man, like if you caught me 10 years ago, mm. you know, the lack of clarity on that system is really what everybody kind of said was, uh, you know, made it kind of snake oily, okay. you know, and people said all that stuff. And then actually, as we learn more and more about reefing, you're like, well, man, these guys are spot on. Yeah. So they're approaching, you know, low nitrogen or nit nitrate and phosphate, right. but replacing it with natural prey sources. Right. Like, and, you know, they're just, Really, it's a definitely a super hands-on mm -hmm. uh, approach to reefing, but like produces results. And after you see why, man, you just gotta trust them. Well, I mean, and how many tanks are out there on the Zeovit? Man, like the whole community worth of tanks, Zeovit tanks that you're like, yeah, that's uh, that's what I want. You know, I think the funny, the funniest thing ever, man. I saw I was pestering the guy that supplies the Zeovit to us, and I'm like, man, why don't you just get this guy to tell us more information about this stuff? And he's like, look, dude, this guy isn't American. He's German. Uh -huh. And in German, you're like, you build good stuff. You know, like, that's it. <laughs> like, it's like your family's name. Box. You know, like, <laughs> and if you came and asked him, man, like, uh, why would you, what's in this? He'd just say, what do you it's mean? Like a, it's like a slap like, in are the you, face. Are you implying I don't make good stuff? <laughs> uh, like, I, like, and uh, also they're super proprietary. Man. Yeah. They spend a lot of time trying to build the things. And, like, they don't just, yeah. like, release the stuff out into thin air. So... I mean, it's totally at odds with like the way the reefing community is going right now, which is more information, yeah. more transparency. Uh -huh. But the stuff produces results. And, you know, for all I know, there is a very specific uh, SPS uh, or amino acid that's valuable to SPS and one that's valuable to LPS. I guess uh -huh. it'd be cool to do like an investigates on that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, to my knowledge, uh, what the difference is, I have no clue. So <laughs> I, I wish I could give you a better answer than that. <laughs> Uh, what else we got here? Uh, do you believe the food helps a coral when it's bleached since it loses its zooxanthellae? And there's more to that question. And uh, main energy. Um, hmm. I mean, if you're taking a page from, you know, from WWC that says that's amino acids is what they bring corals back with, then yeah, probably. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, obviously. Yeah. You know, uh, all the way, man. Like, it lost 70% of its nutritional source. Its main source of energy, uh, uh, fats, and proteins abandoned its body. It yeah. just spit it out. 
Mm. You know, so it has none of that left or very little. And at some point, man, it needs to transition back to a point where it can be reliant on that again and rebuild that population, which mm. if uh, given the chance, it will. Pretty quickly, probably. Yeah, too. but like you need to provide it the other 70% of nut nutrition they just left. So like that doesn't mean spray it with uh, amino acid <laughs> concentrate, you know, because uh, that'll probably have the uh, you know exact opposite response. Mm. But, you know, adding those things to the tank uh, are, you know, very likely to help it provide a nutritional source while it try attempts to survive, you know, a pretty traumatic event uh, of uh, expelling all of the zooxanthellae in its primary food source uh, mm -hmm. into the water. All right, uh, what else we got here? Let's see. Uh, what's your thought on adding aminos with neo nitro uh, that is on a dosing pump for? What is dosing pump for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so neo nitro is adding just, uh, I believe, like sodium nitrate to the tank. Yeah. And you know what? If you can't do it with food, there's no problem, man, with doing with that. So, you know, I just say is it my favorite solution to use nitrate, sodium nitrate, and like uh, the, I forget the exact yeah. phosphate, you know, salt that they're using. But you could quickly misuse it, easily misuse it. You think? You just gotta like when you're dosing something like concentrated and you know like a chemical like that you need to be dosing testing now yeah like there, there's Test no, as no much question. as you're putting in almost. Yeah. yeah with foods and stuff it's just like less critical you know like with foods and stuff it just it seems to have more of a cushion to failure mm -hmm. than you do when you're dosing chemicals straight so i guess uh uh I don't know about doing it in conjunction with the aminos, but if all the foods and aminos and whatever you're putting into the tank aren't achieving the results you're looking for, and you still believe you are, are deficient in nitrogen or mm -hmm. phosphate, you know, the neo nitro or the, is it neo phos? Yeah. yeah. Either one of those things are, are good solutions when you've hit the end point of like, Food ain't doing it for me anymore. Right. I, I don't want to add any more fish. I don't want to add any more fish. You food. don't want to reduce your export because that's another way, another option too. Oh right? yeah, or yeah. Instead of dosing that stuff, man, just turn your skimmer down. Yeah. Actually, you know that's one of the cool things I've been thinking about lately, mm -hmm. man. Is uh, you know we had a lot of conversation about uh, the refugium mm -hmm. in the last couple of years and using that effectively. And I think we kind of like went from one end to the other. Right. Like reefing always does. <laughs> you know, and so. Like when we started, the refugium was largely thought of as like this kind of like nice to have thing that was really more about copepods than it was about nutrient export. Right. And then all of a sudden you put a proper light on the top of it with spectrum and intensity tuned for its purpose. And all of a sudden, boom, man, it's like too effective. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and all of a sudden it's pulling all the nitrate, all of it out. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, what we're going to see the next generation of that is tunable, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because there is absolutely no reason that I can't just reduce the PAR by half, right. which is gonna reduce the rate of photosynthesis by half, which will reduce the rate of nitrogen and phosphorus uptake by half. And right. I'm sure it isn't 100% like uh, unilateral Linear like, like that. that, yeah. But yeah. Uh -huh. uh, just but make, it makes I should sense. be absolutely able to tune yeah. the you know needs of my tank down you know, using that tool. And one of the things that, like, uh, you know, I heard from, from Triton when they were doing their thing is they talk a lot about, you know, that the, re the refugium actually releases carbohydrates and stuff into the water and aminos. Mm -hmm. And that was something that uh, Dana Riddle's articles uh, suggested as well. Is like For macroalgae? Yeah, the macroalgae mm -hmm. and stuff. As part of photosynthesis, they're actually producing, like, excess nitrate or, or excess uh uh, you know, all kinds of, you know, amino sugars, acids, carbohydrates yeah. and sugars and whatever, mm -hmm. like, and they just leak through the cell walls into the water. Hmm. And so as part of that, they take what they need in an excess, just it gets leaked through the cell walls into the water. So it's very likely that the refugium is uptaking some of that stuff, but it's also releasing other beneficial oh, things yeah. as byproducts of photosynthesis. Now we just need to tune it. Yeah, and you know what? One of the other things he gets into a lot, or you know, somewhat into anyway, in the last article was about the you know transitional metals and stuff, and the iron and the molybdenum and all those other things, and you know, especially in a refugium tank, 
you know, it's going to take those things up, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, those are primary components. They're like, they have a biological function that regulates photosynthesis. And because 70% of what the coral relies on is a algae that lives within yeah. its body, which is relying on photosynthesis, those things are required. Okay. Right. And you can be deficient. Yeah. You know, I can be deficient in vitamin A and eventually my eyesight will just go, you know, but it'll probably be a really long time. Mm -hmm. But like eventually, man, I want my, I want to keep my eyes as long as I can, you know, personally. <laughs> so, you know, all those things are, are important roles in, in the whole thing. Uh -huh. And it, and it, it just starts to piece itself together that just because you can't see instantaneous results doesn't mean that it's not valuable. Right. And so I think that we've been like, you know, again, like swinging back and forth in these extremes, you know, like 15 years ago, we just used whatever trace element elixir was available to us because the fish store told us or, yeah. you know, our buddy told us this elixir is great, you know, or Orion did or something, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and uh, then we went all the other way to like, uh, this, like do it yourself one. things and like all of it's garbage uh. unless you can see instant results from it, don't mm -hmm. use it, mm -hmm. right? Which is the wrong answer too. Right. And so somewhere in the middle of all that is just an intelligent approach. And just because I can't see the like animal instantly not die yeah. or instantly, you know, sprout new growth doesn't mean that it's not part of the metabolic function mm. and that we shouldn't pay attention to it. So, you know, I, I just think that, you know, the story is like unfolding as we look at it and you can start to see the like, yeah, I shouldn't be dumping every elixir in there, but I also shouldn't be like, unless you can prove it to me in instantaneous results, like there's no way I'm going to consider that as an important portion of the, that animal's life cycle. Yeah. You know? So huh. interesting. All right. Next one. Let's see. Is fish poo the best food for corals? I gotta tell you, WWC thinks so, and I'm gonna uh, tend to agree. So I, I like their tanks. I want a tank like theirs, and that's yeah. all they do. So, so I think I'm gonna approach it from a similar manner. Mm -hmm. That uh, like it's not just fish food; it's some of the excess food and stuff that goes in there. So they're, you know, they're putting uh, reef roids in their fish food. They're putting uh, amino the the. The bright well aminos mm -hmm. in there. They're There's putting reef nutrition um, oyster pods or something oyster like feast that. Or oyster or something. feast. Yeah, they put a variety of different things in there. Things. So some of it just goes in the water. Some of it's eaten by the fish. Mm -hmm. Some of it does all kinds of stuff, and then the fish poos it all out. Uh, but there's no shortage of uh, growth or nutrition in there. So whatever they're doing, man, it's, it's certainly working. It's a good recipe. Yeah, and so like, it's also like they talk a lot about simple, stable, right? So having a bunch of fish and feeding them proper. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's like, easy. Yeah, it's simple. Easy. I mean, it's simple. Stable. Yeah, for sure. Why not, man? Simple. Like, so, uh, and again, like, it's controllable too, man. If it's, it if it's going up too high, then stop feeding the fish so much. You and they, fish, they feed every hour on the hour, so to cut a couple of those back is pretty easy to do. Yeah, and so, like, also, it's a kind of time release, if you think about it. Yeah. You know, like, it takes a little while to make its way through those various fish. Yeah. So, like, throughout the day, probably at night, man, those fish are, you know, because you're feeding them so constantly, they're probably pooing all the time. Mm -hmm. And, like, a vast majority of the nutrition that they're eating, especially the nitrogen and phosphorus, is coming back out in, in various forms. So it's the, it's the stomach for the corals. Yeah, it's also, like, partially digested and, like, it's probably... Probably a really easy way for the corals to, uh, 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 you know, consume that stuff. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what else we got here? We got about 18 minutes. Uh, I only feed my corals mysis and amino acids. Do I need to dose or feed something else? I mean, needs a super strong word. Yeah, man. I don't. Is your if your corals are looking great? If my corals were looking great and that's what I was doing, I just keep doing that. So the version of great man is like uh, interesting. Okay. Conundrum. Well, right? I think of so my mind my mind operates and there's a my mind personally operates on like what SPS look like. So I'm a stick head. So if my my sticks are colorful, they're growing. You know, if I they, if I got you know, BRS 160 looking tank or WWC looking tank, then whatever I'm doing is is good enough to keep doing and not change. Yeah. But so, you know, this is a hard one because. So I, I saw a guy on uh, Reef to Reef the other day, and you know he used his example of his tank as a you know example of success for you know some unrelated topic, and uh, you know it was a nice looking tank. Don't get me wrong; it's filled right. with SPS and whatnot, and they're all big and whatever, and the 
tank's clearly, you know, established. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, to the untrained eye, everybody would say, good tank. like, yeah, that's an awesome tank, and he should be proud of what he's produced. There's right. no question. But looking at it, man, I can see the tissue's super thin. Okay. I can see that the tips aren't burnt, man, but they're, like, you know, white and, you know. Not new growth white? Yeah, no, nah, just, like, not looking healthy mm. white. And, like, there is... This tank looks like it is suffering to some degree, but m most people wouldn't notice it, mm, right? Okay. And so, like, to me, this looks like the example of a tank that probably loses, you know, one colony every year, see some dieback on some of them a few times a year, mm. but they recover and, and whatnot. And, like, so... I think if I own that tank, you know, I'd probably call it a success and think, hey, man, what I'm doing is good. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm feeding this mysis and I'm um, dosing some uh, amino acids, uh, you know, probably good. Yeah. But if you look real close and you're like, you know what, this thing could be improved. Uh, and it's probably through, you know, some element, man, like uh, either filtration, uh, chemistry, uh, Flow, is through food lighting. feeding, lighting, whatever. So I just kind of look at which one of these things I think is deficient. And my flow deficient is mm. my, you know, nutrient schedule deficient, my lighting. Lighting will, in these days, almost it's never like deficient. Super easy. Yeah, lighting, I wouldn't call it. Well, super easy, we've, but like we've there. I mean, there's we've kind of found that the, the parameters is yeah, we know where to go. Yeah, yeah, if you know what to do and you got the right tool, man, it's super easy yeah. in the ad essence. But I, I'd say it's much easier than it used to be just because, all right, I guess I can't even say that, but I, I'd say that like it's easier than LEDs have made it easier to get enough, you know, par easier than it was uh, prior, you know. Okay. Uh, I, mean, I don't even know if that's true, man. Because a bank of Two teapots is so easy. Was easy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. But, yeah, if not, lighting's new de deficient, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think a lot of times it's actually going to be nutrient deficient, which is that, you know, area between where the corals are just looking awesome and just kind of, like, off. You know, mm -hmm. and so uh, that'd be my advice. So if you want to feed only those two things, and your tanks like n you couldn't couldn't improve on it, then I don't improve on it. If if you think it could be improved on, then yes. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's see. Can you overfeed coral? Uh, the answer to that would be in like the nutrients in your tank are exploding. Right. right? Yeah. Algae blooms, algae growth. I mean, that's probably, that's probably primarily what is going to rear its head first as far as if there's too much, is some kind of algae growth. Yeah, so, yeah, if you're going to see algae blooms or all kinds of other stuff, uh, like, bloom in your tank, man. So you can overfeed, not the coral that way, but you can overfeed Just, the other organisms in the yeah. tank that you may not want. Uh, and so uh, outside of that, like, I wouldn't go, like, you know, I mean, there's target feeding, which is like a slow kind of gentle drift, you know, towards it or whatever. Yeah. But like, you know, just spraying it all over the thing, you know, uh, I don't think actually always produces the best results. No. Like, you know, it's got tons of this food covered in its, you know, mucus layer now, which may be good, but it may be too much or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've seen some corals respond poorly to really like that much food. Also, like large foods and stuff. So a lot of this food, you know, that like you're you know, a feeding your coral. A lot of your LPSs that can take big pieces of food. Yeah, just because they take that huge piece of food right. in doesn't mean they actually can digest it. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're trying. But these are really, really, you know, uh, simple, you know, digestive tracts. So like a lot of what's just happened is it's just basically rotting in there and breaking down. And if it's too big, it's going to be toxic, and it's just going to expel it at some point. And most of the time, it would happen at night, and so you probably don't even see it happening. You know, like it got rid of it, and you would never even know. You just feel like you're doing something good. Yeah. But in general, smaller uh, particles are better. So. Hmm. All right. Uh, are these see. foods for non-photosynthetic gorgonians? Would you? I would recommend. So uh, one of the only NPS tanks that we saw here. So these are tanks for those you don't know that like don't use photosynthesis. So they're all Dendros filter feeders and uh, gorgonians like the like he mentions here. Sun yeah. corals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think his two pro predominant things that he did was reef chili and, and acro power. Yeah. Did he use anything else? It's an RT's tank, right? Yep. Uh, no, I think that was maybe some like 
very small particle things like rotifers or or colonis or maybe something like that but I can only remember the only two things I remember I'm using were these two things mm. and I've, I've seen these two things as uh, you know real popular choices in the past for those tanks this one because it covers a whole wide range of particle mm. sizes uh, from one micron up to like a thousand uh, and this one just because it's a pretty popular uh, amino acid and again I think it's the fact that it's dilute, some people might say, uh, or I believe it to be anyway, might say it's negative, but makes it harder to overdose yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, and even actually some uh, things he had in that tank, that even though there was no light, he actually ended up with a really bad aptasia problem. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so something that normally you know grows off of light, actually they had so much food in there that the aptasia man took over like a good portion of the tank uh just through filter feeding yeah so yeah all right oh an anemone only system what's the best way to feed or how often for healthy growth so i mean people kind of say this one differently and this is what I've seen the best with an enemy systems, and I can't tell you exactly. Mm. There's a lot of fish in it, so I don't know yeah. if it's a fish poo. I don't know if it's a that you symbiotic know. relationship. Yeah, I don't rubbing up against them, bringing delivering food poop, to them, maybe pooping right into them. Could I be. I don't, yeah. know. I don't know. Who knows? But they readily most uh, a lot of anemones readily accept like foods, larger particle. But then we get back to what can they actually digest of that? Yeah, so you see people like throw silver sides in the right, tank, yeah. right? And you'll definitely see the anemone grab it and swallow it. Looks and really cool. As somebody who like tried to uh, propagate uh, uh, anemones uh, for a living at one point in time, uh, if you watch them closely, especially at night, they usually regurgitate it out mm -hmm. because they can't, you know, digest an entire fish. It's right. Especially, I mean, a bigger one maybe could, uh, but the smaller ones that are, you know, in most of our tanks. Uh, I had way better luck with uh, something. I mean, a whole fish, man. You got like scales and all kinds of stuff, yeah. and like skeletons. eyeballs and skeletons mm -hmm. and stuff to digest. So you know, something like uh, a krill, uh, like you know, a good one I, I liked was uh, using uh, uh, like a, a dehydrated krill, and then using I don't have any selco up here, but mm -hmm. using uh, selco. And letting the krill like soak up all the fatty acids oh, yeah. and then feeding that to it. So just super high concentrated that selco or an, an amino acid concentrate into the uh, dehydrated food. Yeah, just makes it super super easy for the thing to digest uh, all mm. that nutrient. And so I mean that would be probably amongst my first choices. But smaller foods, even though it doesn't look like you're giving it as much, you're probably giving it more in the terms that it's not going to regurgitate it. Right. You know, 12 hours from now. Huh. So, uh, and I, I, would, I don't want to say that anemones do better in dirty systems because uh, dirty implies uncared for, uh, and that just isn't what I would recommend for anybody. Mm. Uh, but in a, fit, a system where they're not getting fed at all, the anemone's probably going to get a better response from higher nitrate and nitrogen uh, sources, uh, or high, higher nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, phosphorus sources in the terms of being in the water supply, so a higher nitrate and phosphate level. If you maintain really low nitrogen or nitrate and phosphate, mm -hmm. you're probably gonna have to feed them in some format uh, to make sure that they're you know getting the proper nutrition. Yeah. And you know feeding them can definitely be probably just having a bunch of fish in the tank. You know it doesn't have to be hand feeding them. Mm. All right. Uh, there's a question here. I saw an LFS do whole, dose whole milk for aminos. I still question it, but they say it works. Have you seen this around the forum? I think I've ran into a couple of threads like this of dosing odd food type things to the tank. You know, I mean, this one's weird, but uh, I've never <laughs> heard of dosing milk to the tank. I mean, you're going to add all kinds of nutrients to the tank, yeah. uh, but there could be all kinds of untold things. Anything that, else is in there, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean... I don't know, man. Person, I, for, for me personally, if it's not designed for the t like a reef tank system it, or something like that, I, I don't use trailblazers, it. man. Like they find new stuff, new worlds, new adventures, and stuff. But most of them get shot in the back along <laughs> the way. So I, I don't know, maybe. But I would let other people dose milk uh, first. Uh, in relation to that, uh, somebody asked a while back about like dosing. Uh, protein powder from oh like whey the, protein powder like yeah, the, like uh, for the gym type from the thing. gym yeah, 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 yeah. i like, saw that you thought know, it was a tongue-in-cheek type thing but i think there's a little bit of it that thought felt like it was 
Yeah, I couldn't tell if he's being on or like you're just joking with us or not. Yeah. But like, I mean, I guess I really don't know. I mean, <laughs> like, true. if you were gonna dose, you know, I guess that's just milk protein powder, it's right? Animal protein. Uh, I mean, there's you know whey. egg or you know whey, whey. just like yeah. you know broken down milk, right? Mm. Yeah. So like, uh, milk or egg protein powder. You know, one of the things that people, f- you know, feed, actually, you know, this is one of the things I was going to talk about, actually, huh. uh, in feeding, is feeding fish eggs, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the egg, like, it Freeze might... dried or... Well, like frozen guys, yeah, yeah. like the ones you put on sushi and stuff. So, okay. uh, you feed those little eggs and, you know, they're super high, nu- by design, you know, mm-hmm. uh, super high nutritive, especially uh, energy, you know, source of, uh, I mean, like, all an egg is, is protein and fat, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. I think, so, I think Reef Nutrition guys have something like that. The li- I don't know if it's the Oyster Feast or something along those lines, but it's basically just fish eggs. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, like, you know, fish eggs and stuff. So if fish eggs are good, I guess why not chicken eggs? But I still wouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, I, there's t- so many unknown things that could come come from that, a dose in that kind of liquid to your tank. Who, who knows? But uh, you know what? If milk, dosing milk to the tank becomes the next big thing, uh, you know, bravo to the trailblazers. Hmm. All right. Uh, should nitrate phosphate be detectable with a well-running fuge? Yeah. Okay. That's I can I can tell you from the tank behind us that we don't have detectable nitrates and we have very low detectable phosphates, like okay. with thousands of dollars of a test kit, not just your hobby grade one. Mm. So, yeah. You know what, man? I, I think we've definitely hit the point. And like somebody actually did a, you know, a fat question a while ago and asked me if it could. Fuse